I've popped four rackets in an hour practice before. So you sound like me. I don't want him wearing no pink stuff no more because you look like a nipple. Oh, that's crazy. Uh oh, that's crazy. Talk. All right. Yay! I guess All so. Right. We can edit that out too. All right. Reese, that's gone. That's gone out of here. It's all good. <laughs> Welcome back to the Changeover Podcast. My name is Justin Roberts. I'm joined by Jody McGinley. I am currently in Paraguay for the Davis Cup. I think Jody is in Tulsa, Oklahoma for 25K. And yeah, we have a bit of an impromptu episode today. We found out we were going to do this about two hours ago. So if it's not the best, then it is still our fault. But, but have, some, have some grace for us today. Um, a, I guess we have a mutual friend between myself and the and the guest today, MJ, a little a Bahamian tennis player on the team with me at Davis Cup. And I actually grew up in a, I guess I was playing an academy where Taylor also trained, which is at USDA at Everett. So we were friendly when I was young, but kind of lost touch. And then our friend MJ kind of reconnected us this past week. So so here we are, the the guest we have today, which I already said the name, but uh Accolades are career high 57 in the world in singles, number five in the world in doubles. She's a two time doubles major finalist, five times doubles title holder on WTA tour, including a three peat at the Adelaide tournament at the end of the year. And she's probably one of the few ladies out there who still it's a little bit of a serum volley, play with some crafty angles and drop shots. We have Taylor Townsend. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. No, it's for nice sure. of you to, to join us and thanks for being so accommodating so late uh, last second. Yeah. So we appreciate last it. Last second. Nah, I keep my word. So I was like, I got to get this done before I leave. <laughs> okay, perfect. So we're going to start light. We're going to start light. I'm going to give you three okay. things. I want you to rank them. We got Subway cookies. We got the chocolate chip, double chocolate chip, and macadamia nut. Oh my God. Macadamia nut, chocolate chip, double chocolate chip. Wow. What? Macadamia, Macadamia nuts. Nuts. Yes. That's not that's, a bad shot, though. That's crazy talk. There was, so good. There was a period where that was the number one for me, too. I'm going to have to go chocolate chip, macadamia nut, then double chocolate. Yeah, chocolate that's chip, fair. Chocolate chip, especially when it's fresh. Like, fresh chocolate chip cookie is elite. There's not I mean, that is true, but like, but, like, it's really hard to get macadamia nut cookies, especially, like, solid ones. So, like, yeah. knowing that you can roll up to a Subway and get, like, you know it's going to be... Yeah. For like sure. it's a certain level. But let's not act like it's What's always in st- stock. Like half the time they don't have any cookies available. Because they're good. <laughs> That's why we didn't make any. <laughs> What's your Subway order? What do you order at Subway? Bro, I haven't had Subway since I was pregnant. <laughs> I don't know what, why. What I was, wanted, what was the pregnant tuna, order then? I wanted a Why would you crave sandwich? Subway when you're pregnant? I don't understand I don't, that either. Bro, no, I wanted... So like... I just wanted sandwiches and like I crave like okay. I haven't had McDonald's in 10 years and I like could, I was dying for a, a fish fillet and then I okay. ate it and the next day I was throwing up because I haven't had that shit in so long. No, because um, it's a fish fillet. Yeah. That's why you threw up. Yeah, definitely. You don't get fish <laughs> from, from McDonald's. No chance. This is what I wanted. Um, what do I get? So I get the tuna sub with like all the veggies and all this shit. No tomatoes because that's whack. And then I get the sweet onion sauce. That's Got the, to have that's the, the sauce. one. Real. The that's sweet the onion key. sauce is that's the key. Yeah. Real. Which bread? The the cheesy one. The cheese one. Italian urban cheese. Okay. Yeah. We, we have, there's, there's a respect here. I, I agree with that. <laughs> okay, good. But I go but, I go wait. chicken teriyaki sandwich though. Yeah. I when mean you the chicken teriyaki, that's where I started. When yeah. you were in uh juniors at USTA, were there was there mm-hmm. a place where they would take you a lot? Like was it a common place? Like I know USTA right around the corner had like Panera Bread and stuff, but did they yeah. where would you guys normally go? Okay, so there was a place across the street, like in the same plaza as um as Panera, and then it was a Friday's and then there's this place called Rotelli's. And okay. Rotelli's, Rotelli's pizza. Uh-huh. Yeah. Bro, the pizzas was this big. <laughs> Fox. <laughs> and we <laughs> go Fox. smash. Those pizzas was off the chain. I actually was like, when I went down to South Florida, I went for Thanksgiving um, in November last year. And I was so tempted to like drive to both. I was like, I wonder what a fucking Rotelli's pizza tastes like now. Like, is it was it really as good as I thought it was? Or was I just uh-huh. hungry as hell, was tired of eating the Everett soggy ass salad from from ever yeah, so yeah, I was yeah. like I, I wanted to just get that out of my brain I didn't do it but like what? it crossed my mind so you still thinking about it now 
No, you lose sleep over it. Nah. Still. Next time you gotta lose do it. sleep is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> lose sleep is nuts. Yeah, that was a stretch. That was a stretch. You're right. <laughs> All right. Now we got. I'm gonna give you something and tell me if it's over or underrated, and we're gonna explain why. Uh, okay. Mental training slash therapy for tennis players. Um, I think that it's. I think it's a little bit of both, honestly. I think it just depends on who the person is. Like, I think okay. that tennis, that tennis is a very mental sport. We all know that it's 90% between the ears. But also, just the same good that I can do, it can also fuck you up if you have, like, the wrong people to, like, okay. because you're because you're allowing yourself to be vulnerable and open. If you don't mm-hmm. have somebody who is really, like, listening and really being attentive to like you and what you need like it can really mess mm-hmm. you up mm-hmm. and i've so had that experience be careful who you take leadership from like who you take advice from that sort of stuff yes like it's really and there's a lot of hacks i mean i'm sure y'all know this like it's a lot of people who talk a good game but don't know what the fuck they're talking yeah. about don't know what they're doing mm-hmm. like, like have, have zero experience but have gotten to certain places because they talk a good game so it's like those types of like mm-hmm. you have to be careful of like that type of stuff because it's very easy to get like misled in this world in this in this world I feel like I mean in sports in general like in just junior sports when you're coming from a young age and trying to make it to the pros like it's in all sports but like it's really easy to kind of like you know get yeah. led astray. Do you have someone now that you use or are you just kind of doing your own thing when it comes to that? No, um, honestly, my coach is like my therapist. I'd be saying that all the time. Okay, <laughs> it's okay. like a hat that he wears that he didn't sign up. He didn't sign up for it, but like it just you the just fact that like <laughs> I mean, in a way, but I mean, it helps because yeah. like we've had some like our relationship is so much like deeper than like on the court, and he truly cares about me as a person and like me growing as a person. So like everything that we talk about, you know, that's not obviously related to tennis. It's like about nurturing me as a person and like me growing as a person like and then knowing that the tennis is going to take care of itself like today like we were taking a break from sets like um, in practice and he was like how's AJ doing and I'm like he's really good he's like what's new and I kind of told him like some of the new stuff that he was doing and blah 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 and then I was like all right time to get my mind back on task he was like yep all right let's go so we got to do this 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 and this so you know Mm -hmm. being able to understand like how the, the person that you're working with how their mind works and, you know, I'm sure that he saw me getting to a place of kind of like mental fatigue. So we took a break and kind of like took my mind off of the t- off tennis and what we were doing yeah. on court and then gave me a chance to kind of like disconnect. OK, now we're back connected. And once we got back connected, like I was more focused. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's like unintentionally he's my therapist. But like, I honestly, my circle is very small and there's like a lot. There's very few people that I trust. Um, so especially to like confide in and like, you know, speak personally to. So I, I value everyone that's in my circle. Like I value them a lot and trust them to be able to like, listen, do whatever, like for me, whatever I need, you know, whether it's listen, yeah. someone just invent to like, whatever the case may be. So I think that that's important. When you were, and so for um, you, oh, go ahead, Jordy. Sorry. When you were, um, I guess before you started working with this coach, did you know that this was a role that you would want from them or did it just kind of happen and the relationship built over time that it became like that no um it built over time I mean because he my coach was my strength and conditioning coach at first so like I had already had a relationship with him but when I asked him to coach me like it just opened up a whole like another door you know because it's one thing for performance but then when you're talking about like on court he's not a quote-unquote tennis coach you know okay so it was really like opening up first off we had many conversations about like my experiences with things because he just wanted to understand like what I've been through okay so it was like a lot of different conversations that we had so no like I didn't expect for it to be what it is honestly didn't have any expectations the only precedent that was set was just like look like I'm not about to be another black man telling you what to do and pointing my finger at you and telling you do this do that do this like you're gonna think for yourself you're gonna be your own person like, you're going to make your own mistakes. Like, I'm just here to help guide the best that I can, you know. But ultimately, like, you are going to make your own decisions, which is something that I wasn't used to because 
for the majority of my life, I've had people telling me what to do, do this, do that, go here, go there. You're going to go here. You're going to do this. You're going to, and a lot of the time it was telling me what to do without any say so of what I wanted or consideration of Mm -hmm. like what I wanted or what I needed. So for me, that was incredibly scary, but then it was really liberating at the same time um, because slowly but surely (laughs) I started to trust myself, you know, instead of looking outside to for someone to tell me what to do next. Like I started trusting and believing in myself and listening to my gut. And then ultimately that's has led me to, you know, the success that I've had so far. I mean, reaching a career high singles ranking, career high double ranking, you know, two time grand slam finalists, like all doing things that I've never done before in my career, you know, especially after having a kid. So um, it probably correlates so much like in, in those like tough moments that you trust yourself and trust that you can get like, find success in these tough moments from yourself you know you don't have to look you know like almost helplessly from the outside to get instruction you can figure it out on your own so that's cool yeah and I've always been a thinker but I got out of that because I was I gotten so conditioned for people to tell me what to do you know Mm -hmm. so it's like not necessarily saying that like I couldn't think for myself which is one of the reasons why I love the game of tennis and I love singles because like you have to figure it out and I, I remember getting so pissed when they had first, like, introduced, like, on-court coaching. So I was like, this is bullshit. Like, you're taking away, like, <laughs> you're taking away our ability to, like, you know, like, you're taking our yeah. ability away to, like, fight against each other. Like, I'm doing something, you're doing something, you got to figure it out, you know? And I felt like that was being, like, watered down. And I asked the CEO at the time, I'm like, why are you guys doing this? And he was like, we wanted to be more like basketball. Like, basketball? I'm like, y'all are fucking up. And then I just left it alone after that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely helped me a lot, like a lot, a lot. And again, like it's a work in progress. I mean, you guys know, like it's it can be great one moment, and the next moment it can be shit. And you know, the, with tennis, you win, you lose, you win, you lose, you win, you lose until you shake hands. So mm-hmm. it's just about yeah. how the how you're managing those ups and downs. Ups so and down. for yeah, so for me, like now I have the confidence. Like I told my coach, yeah. I'm going to go here by myself and go here by myself. Like I'm excited to go here and like, you know, do things and like be able to, to turn inward and just like trust me and what I know to work on the court, you know? Nice. So Will it's a cool feeling because oh. it's like, go ahead. Sorry. Um, is he with you every week of the, of the year when you play tournaments or is it uh, certain seasons that you work with him on the road or is it like throughout the whole year? Um, honestly, we're kind of in a unique situation, um, because he lives in Europe. Um, okay. so we are like you the training weeks, basically. <laughs> <laughs> You're used to the coaching. situation right here. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, like practice weeks and stuff, like a lot of the times I'm by myself, um, or with my, my people that I have here, um, but on the road. Typically, he comes to a majority of the tournaments. Like in Rabat, I was there by myself well, with my physio. And then, um, but my coach didn't come and then fuck around. And first point of the match, I sprained my ankle. So we saw how that went. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, it just depends, honestly, um, you know, on, I mean, we're very open. So we talk, it's just like, yeah, I don't need you to come to this. Or like, we've already talked about like post US Open, kind of like what the schedule is going to look like and if he'll come here or there or whatever. So we all, yeah. it's, it's really just about communication and kind of like what I feel like I need. And I voice that. And mm-hmm. then if he agrees, you know, he agrees, but you know, at the end of the day, which is another thing is like, you know, I'm, I'm the CEO, like I'm the boss. So if I say like, look, I'm good. And I'm just going to go by myself and I'm going to grind this shit out. And I'm going to figure it out. Like that's what's going to happen. Yeah, put your foot down. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's ultimately <laughs> like, that's ultimately like, it's the truth. Like I call the yeah. shots. So. We're sure. a team, but, like, at the end of the day, like, you know, I'm the one that says, like, yay or nay. Ed Honcho. All right. <laughs> Next one I got for you. We hear all the stuff about gluten-free, this, high-protein, that diet. Over or underrated? The fat diets are overrated as fuck. Mm. Overrated. Wait, does hydration count as diet? Hydration is included in diet? I'm talking, strict, I'm talking more about food. Oh, okay. Um, that yeah. like the the fad diets are like overrated as fuck. Now I'm gonna say there are people who like are allergic to gluten and shit like that will fuck them up. So I understand mm-hmm. like 
you staying away from that type of stuff or like people who have done like the tests and you see like what you're allergic to like for example like I did a blood test like an allergy test over this like I did a whole like blood panel thing over the off season because I wanted to see if there were any like deficiencies that I had like for my vitamins and like as much as we travel so I was just trying to like see where I was and I found out that I'm allergic like really highly allergic to sesame and I was like that makes so much sense because every time that I eat it like my stomach is fucked like I'm not you even lying know, to you. Like, you didn't know at the time that that's what was causing it or what? N- no, like I, I had knew that like every, when I eat this, like I feel bad. So I had already like been staying away from it. Like I don't eat like stuff with sesame oil or like, you know how Asian food, <laughs> Asian cuisine, they cook a lot with sesame oil. So I try and stayed away from that because I knew just from my experiences that it made me feel t- like I felt horrible. Like my stomach mm. like, like immediately would be like no good. And so then when I saw the test, I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So now I know it confirmed what I already thought, but I didn't know 100%. So I think that that stuff is important because you have, like, it gives you a baseline. Like the things that yeah. I thought I was allergic to, I wasn't, or it's not as bad. And the things that I thought, maybe it confirmed it, or maybe it was like, oh, this is a little bit more, a little bit less than what we had thought. So yeah. I think that getting tests and th- that type of stuff to know what works for your body is important because like, you know, it's all about like maximizing, you know, performance. But at the end of the day, like it's cool to be a vegan <laughs> and play, but like I don't know what if cool, but uh, but like was it I tough like... to get a, was it tough to get a test like to do this kind of test or not really? No, not really. Easy? No, because I mean you can get it I mean I wouldn't say it's easy because it's not cheap. Like uh, okay. you can't I mean it's levels to it, but like the ones that I got were like the ones that told you about like my minerals and like all different types of like, you know, all the different type of minerals and the all the different types of things that like go- are going on in your blood as well as food intolerances. Like it was a, it was a crazy time, you guys. Like it was a crazy time. <laughs> like I had, I had my doctor come and like the test. Okay. I, this is my BTMI, but it's fine. I don't care. So you guys remember in school, like the little like, paper like bowl things that they would give you okay. like hot like they give you the glizzy in uh-huh. you know what i'm talking about <laughs> yeah yeah it's paper <laughs> yeah, but it's paper okay you put like right? cake on it or cupcakes and shit too i know what you mean. Yeah, yeah but it's the thin the paper got the like, thin a paper red, one yeah. like, got a little red yeah, yeah. on it they gave me that for the fecal so they gave me that oh my goodness to like number two you know Mm-hmm. in it and I'm like <laughs> terrified but you have to do it because it's like a huge part of the thing because they have to check your gut and I'm just like no 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 but it was worth no, it though but it was it. worth it though oh you no. didn't do it no no <laughs> so you mean it was terrifying you didn't do it no <laughs> No, What's but like just the thought of it, I was like, "Oh my god!" And then you I paid asked, for it already. Did you pay for it already? I was like, "Can you come hold this for me?" Did you Did you yeah, pay for it already? <laughs> Got to do it. Got to do it. Done, bro. Bro, if bro, I already bro, gave no, the credit card. I'm doing it. You know, bro. I was like, my, I called my what? sister. I was like, Are you "Can serious? you? Can and you hold this expensive? for me?" It Did is. So I was like, "I can't." No. You don't want to buy enough of it. <laughs> oh, you know, yesterday I was going to the airport and on the way to the airport, I stopped and bought soap and I put it in the side of my carry-on, like just in my backpack. And I said, before I get to the counter, I'll put it in my suitcase. Completely forgot to do it. $10 just in the garbage. Waste. Right there. Waste. Quick, quick, quick. <laughs> That's the worst feeling. Tragic. Just yeah, throw the money true. right into the trash. Mm-mm. That's why we're doing this podcast. For sure, we're gonna get some money right back. <laughs> yeah. um, All right, next one, Justin. Next one. Do you think that having a racket change with the ball change is over or underrated? Racket change with a ball change? Yeah. Yeah. Fresh like strings changing new balls. Y'all top pros be changing rackets oh, seven, 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 seven and balls every seven and nine. Mm, I'm a bad person to ask that because I'll be I'll be if I'm feeling it, I'm playing. I'm oh, going to new balls. No, I do. <laughs> but, like, 
I don't, I'm not like a, I got to change. I got to change. I got to change. I got to change. Like mm-hmm. I've, I've tried to like, because I play with a pretty low tension. So like once it starts flying and it's just starting getting bouncy, I'm like, All right, I got to switch, but it might not be with new balls. Like I might play because I'm feeling it and I'm shaping the ball really well. And it's coming off the strings. Like I'd be like, yeah, I want, I want this with the new ball. Cause it's going to really like, whoosh, you know, yeah. so I might play a game or two with the new ball yes. and maybe change. Yeah. So it's like, mm-hmm. like, it just depends on the day, honestly. What like, tension the do you use? I use, um, I mean, I change it a lot. 42, 45, 43, 40, okay. 45. It just depends on, I change it a lot. Basically. Oh, you low, 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 That's low, not that low, 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 low. I'm in the 40, like 42? 40s. I'm like that's 46, low, right? 48. Yeah, that's not that low. And the uh, um, string pattern? Um, Like the gauges? No, like, like your 16, 18, 19, 20, 18, 20. 20. Oh, yeah, yeah, 16, 19. Forty-two. Wow, you. It's yeah. okay. She's serving and volume. Yeah, because oh, I need. Serve I need and volume. Hook hooking up oh, words off the court. <laughs> yeah, but like I need feel. Like I gotta feel. Yeah. Like I gotta feel it. So it's like mm-hmm. when it's too tight, I know. Okay, this shit's gonna go in. But mm-hmm. I also know, like when I swing, it's gonna go in. So it's mm-hmm. like I take. I'll take that. Like when it's like you know like yeah. i'll take that over you know it just kind of being like a true ball and like you know it it's the tension is eating up some of the the rpm yeah, the quality I yeah yeah i just How i many... personally because i play with spin so like yeah i like that i will take the rpms yeah how many rackets do you train for each match um usually like four to four it just depends Damn. too because like yeah because <laughs> What? That's a lot. Jody can't afford to pay for four. Yeah, I'd have the luxury to be. String. I only have four rackets. I'd probably string my whole bag. I don't have this. I only have six. But like the thing is too is like I've had problems with my rackets where they pop in the corner. So they'll pop. Yeah, they've been popping on the knot. So like mm. there have been times where I'll hit two, three, four shots, or even hit with it for like ten minutes and it goes. So like yeah. I get scared and I've popped four rackets in an hour practice before. So, you sound like me. Yeah, so like... Except you some break of them, them in the middle, brother, not on the side. <laughs> like, I popped, I, I popped... I popped six rackets in a week. Yeah, that's a lot. Because so, I string my own rackets too, so for me to think that I have to string six... Especially for a match, like, I like to have two fresh ones. Especially now that I'm just playing doubles. But, like, I, I it'll take me hours to string more than two rackets, you know? Really? Today I was yeah. I came to Tulsa and I had all loose strings. So I said, okay, I'm just gonna drop off one at the string because I didn't have time to do it on my own. Mm-hmm. Twenty six dollars stings, stings. Yeah. How how much does it cost? Like twenty six per racket. With me per racket, I strung one, bro. Twenty six dollars I donated to the tournament. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yes. That's crazy. Yes, and I'll be right in this house over there stringing the rest of my rackets. That's the first. Week. That's the first round check. Go on. What do you mean? Gone. That's the first round. That's it. That's it. <laughs> what does it cost yeah. at the WTAs usually? Man, it costs. It don't cost no less than thirty dollars. It'd be cost yeah. between thirty five to fifty dollars. I remember the I strung one at corner? since that, that made me so mad. <laughs> I strung one in Cincinnati a couple years ago. It's thirty five dollars. Yeah, Madness. but also like the the um the exchange rate too. So if it's like 40 euros, that could be like 45 US dollars or 47 US. Like, you know, so it's like, it just depends. And like the great, the pounds, you know, it could be, you know, 40 pounds, but that's damn near $50. Like, you know, yeah. so it just depends on like where we are too. Do you find that they all string very well or you also find some not so great stringers on the tour? No, like at the, big, at the big tournaments, they string well. Like, okay. They, cause they usually have like Wilson, Babylon, like, like you know, they, like a Luxalon, team, yeah, like, a, like that. yeah, yeah, like the big tournaments they have that. that. When I was <laughs> when I was playing in Rabat, I dropped off rackets at the string, and like I didn't have any fresh rackets, cause I had gotten I had gotten the flu while I was in Rome, so like I was barely practicing, and like we played doves, and I got like two rackets strung for the doubles quarters. And so maybe three rackets because I was like, I needed to practice, but like I was barely hitting. So like I really didn't have like fresh rackets. And so um, 
I dropped off the rackets at the stringer in Rabat. And I was like, the blue, the yellow, this, this. Like, I was telling him because I used two different strings. And I was just like, yeah. I called my coach and I was like, this is going to be really bad. Like, and I can <laughs> already wrong. tell this is going to be terrible. <laughs> he gave it back to me. He got it. Like, I strung it up, but it was like, doing, doing, like, super loose. loose. Like, I was like, oh my 20 God. something. <laughs> I was like, yeah, whatever. Was fuck. fuck, I only hit three balls anyway, so it don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last last one on this uh, this game here. Oh, Olympics. Oh, you got something, Jody? You got something? No, 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 no. I forgot that we have one more. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. The Didn't Olympics. Mean to mess up your food, you brother. Competing in the Olympic Games is over or underrated for tennis players these days. For tennis. Players. Or for yourself. Or for yourself. However you. I look at it. Um, well, for me, like, I'm not going to go. Um, okay. I could have been eligible, who knows, because I was defending French finals. So I probably, I don't even know what my double drinking is at this point. Um, <laughs> but there's like a lot. 20, 24, 24. We got oh, you, don't okay, worry. Thanks. It's not that bad. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it's not bad. Nah, 24. Uh, when you were five in the world, that's not great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm about to get to one. Fuck this. Um, <laughs> I was like, a couple of these girls should call me daddy because I just gave them some matches, you know. But anyway. That's a clip. Uh, That's a clip right there. <laughs> clip it. See you on Instagram. Send it, to, send it to me because I'd be like, call me daddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I don't know. Like, that's really tough for me because, like, I think that it's a very cool experience. But for me personally, like just it being an Olympic year, I can just speak, like I can just talk you guys through my thought process. So I've never been eligible for an Olympics, you know, prior to this year. So mm -hmm. it was kind of on my radar, obviously from last year, like ending the year, like within the top 10, like, you know, whatever. So I'm like, okay, I can just keep in, stay in the competitive window. Um, and that was like my whole thing. But as I've, played more matches and have done you know whatever I was just like yeah and as it honestly as it's gotten closer to the Olympics I'm like this is cool but like I feel like I'd be doing myself a disservice going just for doubles just for me like mm -hmm. if I was gonna go I want to be front facing like I want to be in both singles and doubles you know so because that's the that's the player that I am like I'm not mm -hmm. a I'm not a doubles only player, you know, and I've always said like I'm not a doubles only player, just that my doubles ranking is just higher right now. But like mm -hmm. so for me, I was just like I'd rather take the time, you know, play matches because obviously like the, my injury that I had was unforeseen. So like I was like, well, damn, now I need matches. So I'm like I'm entered into three extra tournaments. And I'm like, then I get on, I get into the U.S. hardcore swing. People are gonna be cooked, yeah. you know. So like for me, I'm like, I'd much rather like give myself the opportunity to be fresh, to be ready to go, and like, like fuck shit up on the U.S. hardcore swing, you know, than going over to the Olympics, switching surfaces again, being in Europe for another two weeks. Like it's just a like it's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. not easy. Like it's not logistically like easy, and it's a lot on your body it's easier for people who are based in Europe because like you can go home, you know, you go, you lose in a tournament early, like you go home. But for us, like yeah. you either got to make the decision to like stay, or if you do go home, like you come and you fly nine, 10 hours just to be there for a couple of days, you know? So it's like, for me, I'm like, it's not worth it. So yeah. I was so, just like, if I was in singles, I'd do it. But like only doubles, I'm like, I'd rather be, I'd rather be physically and mentally primed and prepped to like, make runs like in the bigger tournament yeah so i guess that leads us into another thing so you have a quote from the u.s open it says i'm out here working i'm a tennis player period right now my singles ranking is higher than my doubles ranking um but not for long sorry my doubles ranking is higher than my singles ranking but not for long so mm -hmm. like you touched on it a little bit about your priorities and that sort of stuff do you how does it work when you're training and preparing for events do you prepare for both or do you prioritize the singles or how does it work yeah, like I only practice like for singles. Okay. Like I'm I'm 
a singles player. I'm just good. I'm just five in doubles. Like I can't help that. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> do you think <laughs> like, the do you think the game style that you play is what translates so well to doubles because of the I mean lefty good serve serve and volley that sort of stuff like it translates so easily for you into the doubles yeah and like I've always loved playing doubles like playing doubles I've always played so it's like it's always helped my singles game I think that one of the things that separates me and like my thought process is that like I don't in tennis there's especially in like the the higher you get up in the singles rankings there's always this, this stigma that like you can't be you can't do both Like, you can't be good at both. You can't excel. And I'm just like, that's bullshit. Like, at the end of the day, like, it's an opportunity to be competitive and you get matches, you get money. Like, what are you talking about? You know, I think that it's such a, it's such a dumb, like, mindset. (laughs) Yeah. Like, it's dumb. Like, I think that it's so stupid because I'm like, you guys, like, it's still an opportunity to play. Like, what are you talking about? Like, at the end of the day, and that's why I, like, always try, I don't want to say defend like doubles only players but i'm just like at the end of the day like this shit is fucking hard you still got to be out here it's almost harder because it's just like you got to do double the shit in order to make money you got to like you split your points like it's all this other stuff like you have to work harder to get further along and you pl- you have to play damn near every week or go deep in like yeah the, the big tournaments like it's not easy and like so they're like the lifestyle is hard like it, it really is and on top of that, I'm just like, you still have to execute. Like, you know, whether it's like in basketball, whether it's like what, three on three or five on five. I don't even know how many fucking people are on the, the court at one time. You're but, lying to me. You, had a, you, had a good, you are lying you had a, to me right now. No, you I don't know. You don't know how many people are on a court at a basketball game. No, 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 no. Yeah. She said three on three, five on five. She really don't know. It could be four on four. But three on three is, a, is a thing, too. That, that, that's a thing, too. It's in the Olympics. It's, three it's on three, right? It's okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right right both times. You're right both times. (laughs) Dang. First of all, the hostility is nuts. But anyway, we'll we'll touch on that later. My bad. But but yeah, like, you know, you still have, at the end of the day, like, all the concepts are the same. You still have to execute. You still got to get the ball Mm. over the net. You still got to play. You still got to make sure you got to get the, keep the ball away from this motherfucker that's up there that's trying to hit the ball. Like, it's a lot more thinking and, like, strategic. So, you know, it's one of those things where it's like that's why we don't like we have seen some singles players like doing well in doubles but they that's only happened as they played more you know like mm-hmm. as they started to play more and their the confidence in the singles then translates to the doubles so now you're swinging free like you're making tons of like the co- like the the principles that you have in doubles you gotta make the first serve gotta make the return that's the biggest thing you play in these no ad points you don't want a motherfucker who get tight and can't return. Like you want to make sure that you know someone's gonna be able to make the fucking return, right? So it's like mm-hmm. those things, those things translate. Like you have to do all the things. So I'm just like, stop that. Like stop with this thought process that like it doesn't matter. Like it does. It's hard. Y'all try and do it. Has the so, the, the doubles yeah. results like the because you've obviously gone deep in a lot of tournaments and doubles. Well, more than the singles, I guess. So has that ever impacted the singles like negatively? Like being in the doubles draw until late and that sort of stuff, like preparing for the next week and that sort of stuff? No, because for me, I look at it as competitive play. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, so so just to give you guys a thought, like an insight into my mind, like I'm going over to Germany on Thursday. I'm not in, I'm not in the tournament in singles. Like literally I'm five out of qualities, but I said, I need matches on grass. I need matches. Yeah. I don't give a fuck how I get the matches. I need matches. So I'm yeah. like, I'm going to go over there. Me and my partner already agree. Why are you laughing, Justin? Play. She's serious. I'm just serious. Because before, before the episode, we said, it's okay. You got to curse, curse, let it ride. And every said this. <laughs> well, that's and me. You it. sent me. You told no, me. No, but I love it. But, that, but I'm enjoying it. I'm laughing. I'm, I'm not upset. I'm just, it's just fun. So you need before you Justin, need mother effing I, matches. I'm before a, Justin I'm so a, really cut you off, you were saying about your your trip to germany i'm the one of the best code switchers y'all will meet trust me uh run it (laughs) but um (laughs) yeah so like i'm going to germany and i was just like i just need matches so i'm gonna go and just play doubles and use it as like a training week so i'm gonna have people play singles points get a feel for constructing points in singles you know whatever like just use it as like a competitive training week to get ready for wimbledon but at the end of the day it'll still give me an opportunity to compete and still 
execute on the things that I need to do in a match, point blank, period. So mm -hmm. I was like, you know, for me, like, I don't look at it as a negative thing. Obviously, yeah, I would love to play and play in qualies or play wherever and be able to get a real singles match, of course. But you do what you got to do. But for me, I'm like, okay, I just need matches on grass. Like, I haven't played in gra on grass in a year. I haven't played any of the lead-up tournaments. Like, so this is an opportunity for me to kind of work myself into that. So, and every to me, everything happens for a reason. So I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm five out of qualies. It is what it is. I'm still going to go. So, you know, there are some people who may not have taken that approach and said, well, I'm just yeah. going to go over to London early and just train, train, train. And I'm like, no, like, I'd rather go and play. Even it's probably if so it nice to be like, in a tournament go. atmosphere and find a rhythm, like even routine, that sort of stuff too. It's nice. Yeah, I mean, I don't really struggle with that, like routines, because I am like a very like routine. It's almost I I'm a routine person, and I I search for that, which fucks me up sometimes because like you have to know when to be fluid and when to be rigid. Um, mm -hmm. so for me, it's just about you know getting in that swing of like just playing, you know, being free doing what you got to do like and and again because it's such an extreme surface change like we're not practicing on grass courts we're practicing on hard courts so it's an extreme change like I was playing on clay and I'm playing on hard courts I got to go play on grass so for me it's more of like going into the tournament yeah it's cool being in tournament environment whatever I don't really care about that but it's more so of like you know competing and just you know getting an opportunity to really work out the kinks like that I'm feeling and feel those emotions and that, those feelings of being nervous, being tight, like, mm -hmm. oh shit, it's a deuce point. Like I gotta, I gotta make this return. I gotta make this, you know what I mean? I have to execute. Yeah, yeah. Like the only way that you can get those feelings is, is, is in, com in competition and playing matches. Exactly. So I'm just like, however it comes, it comes, however it presents itself, it does. It sounds to me like playing doubles is good for, I guess, like you said, that competitive I guess those competitive skills, like dealing with those moments, the those points, um, yeah, being tight, whatever, those those nerves. But do you yeah. think that it translates in terms of the skill? I know you hit a lot of serves and a lot of returns, but one could argue that they're kind of different returns. Like normally in doubles, mm -hmm. you have small windows to hit into. When singles, maybe you want to play a bit more through the middle with the return. Mm -hmm. You have more space. Mm -hmm. It's not as you're not worried about as net person. Do you mm -hmm. think that the double skills that you train playing those matches translate to singles at all? Or is it just more about the mindset and the, the competitive nature of the game? Yeah, for me personally, like, that stuff doesn't bother me. Because I know I'm like, I know when I'm playing singles where the fuck I need to hit the ball. Like, I know I can, okay. it can't go in these little slender things <laughs> that count in doubles. It can't go in there in singles. <laughs> Like, I agree with you. Like, no, no, I, so it's like no, I I understand like your question, but like you know, for mm -hmm. me, it's like I think it's more so about the mindset. It's just like okay, like yeah. you're in a like in singles, you never play no ad points, but in doubles, you yeah, play never. no ad. So no. you ha you have to, in this moment, you have to execute. Like yeah. in singles, in the moment, you have to execute. So it's just like whether I'm executing on a doubles court or no ad point, or I'm. I need to execute on a break point. It doesn't matter. You still have to fucking do the things you have to do. So you so, value yeah. more like handling the moment. Like it helps you yeah, handle moments like, better. Yeah, it's just the mind, like the mentality and the mindset, number one. And then two, like I said, just those feelings of like when it's deuce and I'm returning or when it's a no ad point and I'm serving and I have a play that I'm supposed to, <clears throat> like that a, a set play. And I know that I need to get the ball there. Like, how do I get the ball there? Mm -hmm. You know, just the same as like a break point or when it's a point, it's a set point. I'm a serve. I need to put it there. How I get like, it's the same thing, you know? So it's and no that, difference. Like yeah. you're still in those lines. And that confidence translates because it's real confidence. It's still pressure yeah, and it's still it, the same you, moment. Because yeah. you still like, I have to do it. You have to do it. Yeah. You have like, you still have to do it. You know, yeah. you still got to make the serve. Whether How it's single, is... double, you still got to how different is mixed to you than regular doubles? Like mixed doubles to regular doubles? Is it much oh my different? God. It's so fun. Um, yeah, we see you doing the push-ups with Jamie Murray and the celebrations with Shelton. Like, how is you enjoy that? Is it similar? I mean, do you like it more than regular doubles, or is it just? What it's it a is completely in different vibe. It's a completely different vibe. Um, in women's doubles. I'm the leader of the team. I'm the leader. So like 
It doesn't matter who I'm no playing with. No matter who you're like, playing with. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I'm I like. I believe you, actually. I believe you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm big dog. Yeah. But I'm not, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't big dog. She's daddy. My, Call her my, daddy. My, what? Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, like, that's just who I am, right? So it's like, mm-hmm. and I've, I've learned over the years how to be a better leader because before, I struggled a lot with playing with certain type of players because they, our game styles didn't match up. And so over the years and becoming more mature, I have now learned how to adapt my game to best play with the person that I'm playing with. It's not the other way around. <laughs> I'm the mm-hmm. one that has to adapt and adjust, like, to make sure that we play our best mm-hmm. tennis, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, when whoever I'm playing with, like, I lead and I – try and just you know put us in the best possible situations whether it be encouragement you know mentality like whatever like when we were in the u.s open quarterfinals like i was literally screaming at layla say you big dog say it say it like i'm in her face like i'm literally Yo, in her face like say i would have laughed i would have laughed i would have laughed if because I was that's that's one of the things where i said you should call me daddy because the girls that we lost to that we should have beat won a tournament you welcome uh-huh. Go ahead. All right, Dad. All right, Dad. Yeah. Get on my nerves. Say that it, Dad. shit pisses me off to this day. But anyway. Uh, we got more clips. I was about to say something crazy. And then the difference, Man, the difference between that was, and playing Mick. Oh, you, you want to say something? Sorry. Go on. No, but like the difference between that where it's just like I'm having to like encourage the person and be like, let's go. Let's like I'm pulling you. Come on. Come on. Come on, motherfucker. Let's go. <laughs> And then versus like on in mix, like the guy already knows what they can do. So it's a certain confidence and a certain thing where it's like, yeah, this girl can't return my serve. Like Ben would be like, oh, this is federal. They gave me new balls. I'm about to smack this bitch. I was like, that's what I'm talking about. And you was those same those words? Man, he's my favorite person. He's my favorite. <laughs> We're like we're we're so much alike, and I, it was amazing to me because like when I would be around him, I'm like, you come off as this like such a sweet little like smiley little boy. I'm like you're, you got the. I no, like, he you does not. That. Have you not? You Bro. don't have you don't have social media. Yeah, you don't get so much hate on social media on Instagram, no, I mean, Twitter, and so. I don't look at that shit, but like I just know like from knowing him, and then like if you look at him, he's always smiling. Like you know, he's very competitive. Like you can tell, he's very competitive. Like, he wants to win. Like, he's very competitive. But, like, if he's not in that <laughs> space, like, smiling, chilling, like, very relaxed, dapping people up, saying what's up, speaks, and everything like that. And then, like, he gets on the court, and I'm just like, oh, you got you got that shit. <laughs> I like that. And I, I remember telling his dad, I was like, yo, like, he's got that thing. Like, I didn't know he had that. Like, so then I got excited. I started licking my lips. I'm like, oh, yes. Like, we about to turn up. And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> like legendary moments, like to this day, legendary moments. Yo, tell viral me, them moments. celebrations, them celebrations. Any of them pre-planned, or you? That's just in the moment. No. Oh hell no. Nah. <laughs> that's natural. You just Wrong. feel it. Right you there. just feel it slam you in the moment. Just, I'm just saying, feel it slam like, in the moment. Like we're we're <laughs> alike. So when yeah, it was raw. Yeah, I was yeah. Like, I'm like, okay. Oh, you gonna turn up? I'm gonna be right there with you. Come on. All right, dude. <laughs> Y'all yeah. playing again this year? That was good. No, no. Damn. Guess it wasn't that fun. It was. <laughs> it was it is. <laughs> yeah. so, I'm getting so, dumped. <laughs> but Taylor. So tell us about your your health. I I, I saw that you were the pilot of the French. Of uh, it's a chronic ankle sprain, so like, mm-hmm. where are you at with that now? And like, what was the process like to recover? How were your days set up the last no. the last few weeks? Yeah, no, I'm I'm great now, I'm a hundred percent. Um, like, I don't know if you guys like, I went on a rant on my Instagram story, but like, I had a little bit of a setback, like, ankle was feeling fine, I was back in the gym training, and like, I was in the gym, was totally fine. Got in my car, got out of my car, couldn't walk. Like I thought that I like tore my meniscus. No way. I had no idea what happened. My knee was like swollen. Like it was huge. Like I could not, I couldn't walk. Like 
legitimate like I was in bed and if I moved my leg like it would just be like this sharp pain like up my leg and I was just so upset because like that set me back like another week which is why like I was supposed to be playing Berlin but I was just like I'm mm. not I'm not going over there. I'm not going to be ready you know mm. and I'm glad that I did I'm glad that I took the extra week to prepare because like last week was a fantastic training week like this week started off great like today was amazing so <laughs> I'm thankful and um like I said like that injury that that happened in Rabat and like this is the first time I've ever had to pull out of a tournament in my life like in my career I have never withdrawn from an event like before the event started like if I've withdrawn or pulled out it's always been because something happened like there you know yeah, on the cool guy. um and it's been it's been like few and far between that that's happened like in Rome when I was playing my singles like I said I was playing with the flu like I was seeing two balls like I felt like I was about to pass out. Like I was like, I would go for a serve and I would be like, doing shit. Like I was, I was fucked. But I was just like, I'm not, I'm not pulling out. Like I'm a finish. And I ended up losing this, this, the set, like six, the third set, like six, one or six oh or something. But like, I was like, I'm a finish. So it's like, I've never done that. So like mentally that messed me up too. Cause I was just like, dang, not really. It didn't really mess me up, but it was like tough for me to like go on site and like see everyone and everyone like you know kind of feel like that tournament buzz grand slam buzz energy and like knowing that like i won't be a part of it yeah. um <laughs> but i'm i'm really grateful honestly that this whole thing occurred because like it just taught me like like honestly just gratitude like yo like this was something that wasn't that bad but it was bad enough to just take you out for a little bit of time but like really like understand what you're doing and how blessed you are to be in this situation and like don't take this shit for granted like you know just it really taught me uh, like it really gave me like a high level of gratitude of like the training practice matches traveling like the whole the whole nine so um mm. i'm so, you know i'm really happy like the, it just gave me a bit of a perspective and mindset yeah. shift. so speaking on this perspective and stuff um has has there been a shift since you've become a mother like from before to after like how how has that changed and like you said talking about perspective and stuff how how different has that been and how has that impacted you yeah it's been a huge shift like i'm so different um, um but it's been like the best because um like i said i you know, tennis, you have to be selfish, right? You have to think about yourself and it breeds, naturally breeds like very selfish people because it's all about I, 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 me, 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 right? So um, when I became a mom, like first I was trying to like create systems and routines because that's what I understood, like from an athletic mind, like it needs to go like this and like this and like this, right? And that's not how the shit works at all. I'm just gonna let y'all know y'all got kids you have kids like don't expect nothing because it's not gonna go don't plan shit because it's not gonna go the way you think it's gonna go so that was like really hard for me because I'm like why is it not fitting into my system like this is getting really frustrating and annoying and then I got mad I got a why is it even I, not discipline <laughs> no it's not that but it's just like I can't control when the motherfucker gets hungry you gonna get hungry at 2 a.m or one night and then one night you don't get hungry at six. Like I can't, but like yeah. your the schedule, like if I pay attention, it's like, okay, it's been usually every three hours, but then it'd be every two hours, or every hour and a half. Like it's, it's no consistency. Like it's, it's a new mm -hmm. day every day. And that's how kids are. Like literally they're learning. So the world is all new. They're literally like, it's like, oh my God, they're like exploring new stuff every single day. They do new stuff every single day. Like they're they're not indoctrinated with experiences. Like they're literally like creating them as they go. So yeah, like a fresh canvas. Yes, yeah, so I'm trying to put you in this, and it's not working. Like this yeah. is really frustrating. Um, so for me, being a mother has really shown me and helped me to learn how to be more fluid and to be like to uh, like to first get rid of and throw like expectation like out the window that's really hard for me too because then like I'm a perfectionist so then I have certain expectations for myself um but it's gotten a lot better because I like I'm actively working on it but also just like learning how to be how to flow 
And like that did not exist in my in my world, in my space. Like if I didn't understand it, it wasn't happening, you know? So like, it's really mm-hmm. taught me how to like go with the flow and just like, oh, okay, we are doing this. All right, we doing this. All right, we doing this. It's like on to the next, on to the next, you know, being okay with that constant motion and movement instead of it being like, we're playing with blocks. So we're going to play with blocks, you know? Yeah. We're playing with like, how we, we we're playing with blocks and you, you threw them all out. Now the shit's everywhere, but then literally you played with blocks for 30 seconds and now you're out doing something else. Like, okay. You know, before it was like, what, you know, but it now sounds like you're right. learning patience. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> very much so. That too. Very much so. Very much so. But like learning how to be fluid and just like go with the flow. It's just like, because the more that you try to fight it, it becomes more and more and more frustrating because you feel like there's sh- more and more shit that's out of your control, which it is. Mm-hmm. So it's just like learning how to know what you can control and going and just kind of riding with what you can't. Did you know you... that you're gonna come back? Sorry, yeah. Listen. Did you know that you're gonna come what back and play after after mother? Was that always yeah. the plan? Like when, like when you got yeah, when you got pregnant, like was it right away that you were decided I'm gonna have this baby and I'm gonna be back on the tour, or was it like let's see what happened? Yo, this was not planned. He was an actor. Right back. Right back. Right away. So it was, I was playing world team tennis. Like I was playing while I, when I found out that I was pregnant. Okay. So I had no idea that 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 actually happened until I was like, something not right. <laughs> but I was sesame. really playing. Must be the what, sesame oil. And, uh, what, what were the signs? What were the signs? Right. I was just like, damn, some. I was like, this suit has some hot. sesame oil in it. Just, just say, you, hey, it's really hot. You hot? No. <laughs> no. I was like, no, this is how I knew I was fucked up. I was at practice, right? And I was like, damn, I do not feel good. I sat down and I was like, yo, I need a soda. Someone give me a pop. I need a Sprite or some shit. I do not drink pop. I was like, someone bring me a fucking Sprite. I was like, oh, something's wrong. <laughs> you have a cravings early. <laughs> I was like, something's not right. I was like, I was eating like a plain like noodle, just just straight up noodles, gluten free at that. How about that? Just put that <laughs> on the cake. Gluten free noodles, just plain mushy as shit. I'm like, ordering subway Ooh. tuna sandwiches. Oh my god, to that. Mixed then filet, I then I trend <laughs> fish fillet, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But you, um yeah, you I just feel like it terrible. added any pressure, like any pressure or it motivates you more, any of that stuff? No, it totally motivated me more. But like when I when I found out that I was pregnant, like so I found out in June or July during World Team Tennis, like I said. And then when I looked at my schedule, because you have to think like this was during COVID. So we were still in the bubble, right? It was twenty twenty. So Cincinnati, Ooh. that was the year that Cincinnati and the U.S. Open were both it's held in the US bubble Open. at Flushing. So I was like, okay, well, this is my schedule. Like I had a couple of weeks before I didn't play anything leading up to uh, uh, leading up to Cincinnati, but I played was I was playing on playing Cincinnati then the U.S. Open because I'm like, well, it's all the same place. And so, um, yeah, I was just like, I went and I, I did all the tests, and I'm like, can I play? He's like, yeah, you good. I was like, cool. But it was weird because I was like, I didn't want anyone to know. So I was hiding. Mm-hmm. So like I'm throwing up before getting on the bus. Mm-hmm. And like, it was just terrible. Like, you know, just I was just trying to stay far away and just, you know, whatever. Like but, COVID. Um, <laughs> nah, you like COVID. I, knew, I knew what <laughs> I had. No, nah, I knew what I had. No, you had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> but I told my doubles partner, I told Asia, I was like, I brought her to my room uh, and I said, girl. I need to tell you something. I said, uh, I ain't going to be practicing that much. I don't got a lot of energy. I need you to carry the weight, okay? I said, my ass is over here struggling. I can't breathe. I'm going I'm to call, call you daddy this week. Yeah, exactly. Call me. Yeah. <laughs> well, she was like, but it ended up like, you know, we sat in my room and like I cried and we cried together. And she was like, all right, I got you. And I was like, all right, cool. And then we made the semis of the US Open. So then... So I made semis. You made semis while pregnant. You like, yeah. You like Serena Damn, I should Junior. get pregnant more often. <laughs> yeah. Like Serena Hell Junior. no. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. Ma- <laughs> semis of US Open, three months pregnant. So I was like, all right, I'm cool to like walk away like this. So I was like, mm-hmm. I'm cool. But like, I already, I had already knew 
like I was going to train my whole pregnancy, like as long as I could, you know, everything was like, as long as I can, as long as I can. But actually it was, in, it was amazing because going into like that Cincinnati U.S. Open bubble, all of the, like I told you guys, like I've always put like expectations and stuff on my, all of that shit was gone. I felt so free. I felt so relaxed. And I was like, I can just go play because I'm about to be to, gone. To get pregnant? Okay. I was like, well, it's just the mindset. I was just like, because I'm about it, to Justin. be gone. <laughs> Y'all, don't be Stop out getting here excited. Swinging. You can't. Don't, do that. No, no. I would be, be scared. If it happened to me, I'd be scared. It'd be the opposite. Y'all <laughs> be out here slinging. slinging. I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't sleep. I wouldn't sleep for months. I ain't advocating that. Like I said, it was an accident. But uh, <laughs> if there's anything, I was just to learn. I was like, you know, it just released, like, it just allowed me to just be free. And I was just like, but I had already knew. I was like, I'm going to come back. But the thing that I said, I was like, when I come back, I'm going to be better than I was when I left. That's the only thing that I said to myself. And I said that to my sure. team. I didn't know what the fuck that meant. But I was like, and I'm I'm being honest. Like, I really didn't know what that meant. I didn't know how much work that was going to take. Because, again, I've been at a certain level. And it was a lot of, like, mental deconstruction. <laughs> like, a lot. So, but I was just like, I was committed to it because I was just like, I refuse. This is just the kind of person I am. I was like, I refuse to leave and come back the same person and like, you know, have this completely different experience and, and treat this domain the same. Like, I'm not going to do that. It's going to be, I will make this a different experience, you know, than it has yeah. been for however long that I've been playing. And it was, so that was my mindset. And this was so interesting because like, even when I saw Naomi in Indian Wells, we we're in the locker room. And that was the first time that I had seen her like in person since having her baby. And all the the women that have their kids and come back, like I always make it a thing to like go and congratulate them for like, making it back. I'm like, I understand this shit's fucking hard. Like, and it's very easy. All of the women who have had kids and came back could have easily been like, yeah, I'm good. Like, They've accomplished enough to where they didn't need to. Like, you didn't have to come back, but mm -hmm. you decided to. So, like, yeah. I really, I really, on purpose, like, commend them and be like, salute, because this shit is hard. Um, you know, just even just the physical stuff, like, not even taking into consideration, like, you have another human that you're responsible for and, like, all that yeah. stuff. Just, like, the self shit is hard. And when I talked to her, I was just like, you know, I'm really happy to see. Now, granted, like, I have barely spoken to Naomi in my life, like, not lots of words not on purpose but like we just never spoke and so i like made it a thing where i was just like hey like i'm really happy to see you back out here like it's amazing like congratulations well done you know all this stuff I was like how do you feel like mentally how do you feel like how do you feel like coming back into the tournaments and like playing and stuff like that and she was just like i feel great but she was like it's just really weird that i'm coming back a different person and this is still the same yeah. So okay. it was it was very interesting to hear someone of her, like that's accomplished the things that she's accomplished to say that because again it kind of alluded to what I said like I'm not going to come back the same person and she didn't come back the same person but entering into something where it is the same shit yeah like mm -hmm. that's difficult because like the cycle still goes on the same you guys went out and came yeah. back in but the cycle is still the same and so you have to learn then in your new self to how to one second change in, in fit, to fit. <laughs> Unnecessary. <laughs> to fit. Unnecessary. <laughs> but you have to learn how to fit you know and how to make this new this thing fit yeah. when it's you know it fit when you were your old you but now that you're your new self like it's it doesn't feel right so then you have to learn how to adjust so it's um it's been a super cool process just mentally and, and honestly, like me as a person, like I honestly couldn't imagine like not having him. Like it's been the best mm -hmm. thing ever. And it's, it's honestly like the most rewarding for me. Like when I, like he watched my matches, like he watched my matches at Indian That's Wells at Miami. Cool. Like he was sitting there and be like, like there was one, there was one um, match I was playing. I was in Austin and he was literally sitting on the sidelines and he was like, let's go, mommy. And I was like, you're right. All right. You're right. You ain't call your daddy? Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. 
He's on the sideline. No, come on. He's here doing this. He said, he 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 why is mommy digging her nose? I know. It's going to be amazing. He starts sprinkling. He do that. Yeah. I'm going to Oh, my God. My baby. So we. I actually was outside. I was out yesterday on Sunday. And I was just like, I want to do something. So me and my older sister. You remember Simone Justin? So me yes. and Simone, my older sister, went to go hit. And now I have a younger sister or half sister on my dad's side and we all went to the park to go hit and so i was hitting with simone my baby sister kept hitting balls over the fence i'm like girl okay she's 10 and then she hit one shot and then she looked at me and she was like Uh... okay i'm the cool (laughs) sister yeah (laughs) hey guys quick break Justin here from The Changeover. I'm going to talk about Pro Stringer. It's a great machine that I use, Jody uses, and a lot of other pros use as well. You can use it at home, on the road, really anywhere there's a tabletop surface. It takes me about 25-30 minutes to string a racket on this machine. It is easy to travel with, fits in carry-on, suitcase, tennis bag, no issues at TSA. It's a big money saver, and you can save even more when you use our code CHANGEOVER to get $100 off the machine. So Back. head to the shop link in our link tree on Instagram and you can find uh, a wide variety, not that wide actually, variety of Chill stuff. <laughs> we, have, we have short sleeve dry fit, long sleeve dry fit. We have hoodies, uh, pink and white. And then we also pink have, <laughs> we have a white sweater <laughs> as well. <laughs> so um, yeah, head to the link. Oh, and the back of the of the of everything has the change over the bench and stuff. So, yeah, we have international <laughs> shipping. We have shipping in the U.S. and international shipping. <laughs> but if all this is in Antigua, we have it also in Heritage Sports, um, dry fit, long sleeve, short sleeve. So feel free to help us out. All the money that we make from from the merch goes to editing costs. Obviously, it costs money to run this business. We enjoy bringing content to you. So. This is how, I guess, you can support us and also get some cool clothes too. So thank you and hope you, hopefully you like the clothes. Quickly before we go, we had, it was kind of last minute. So we um, asked Instagram a question. This is from Jimmy. Okay. What are your views on the serving volley in the modern game? And why did you start back, start staying back more recently after your serve? Um. So I think that the serving volley is great. I think that it's a great, way to um to disrupt your opponents but the girls are well the women on tour are so good at returning um and they're so good at being able to get the ball low at your feet and putting it in difficult positions for you to hit a good volley so I think that it's a it's a lot more you have to be a lot more strategic like I think that it worked for me during the 2019 U.S. Open like it was great um, but like when I played against Andrescu, she was get, she was fucking me up when I was trying to serve in volley. So I was just like, if I don't change something, like I'm about to be swept off this court. So mm-hmm. I had to then figure out ways to blend my game, serve in volley, getting to the net while still being consistent and being disciplined from the baseline because she was, she was hitting her target so well. So I think that in this game with the speed, um, it's really hard, you know, to be able to do that like over and over and over and over and over and over again, like the way that I did against Halep um, in 2019. So I think now I'm a little bit more, um, you know, I guess decisive when I serve in volley. Like I decide kind of like when the right time is. But to be honest, like I'm going to start doing it more. And I'm glad that we're starting on grass because like, the grass kind of like forces me to get back into that groove and into that mode. So like I had already said, like I need to get my ass to the fucking net, you know? So it's cool. Like that's going to be like a high priority for me, like on grass and moving forward. Nice. I think it's good too. Like it adds an element. What up? Go on, go on. No, no, I was just making sure that we don't have any more. But yeah, yeah, we're good. Go on, I was going to say like it adds an element of like uncertainty for the opponent, for the opponent. Like if, if you Serve a volley and execute well, but you can also execute well from the baseline. Then it's like a big moment. They don't actually they don't know how to position sometimes, or they don't know what to expect. So I think it could yeah. definitely be good for you if you if you're good, which you are good at doing that. Definitely could be yeah. a plus. Thanks. You have any more, Jody? No, no, that was it. That was it. It was too. I was too late with the posting. It's all good. All right, Miss Townsend. To end this, 
We're gonna have a game, you versus Jody. A little okay. a little trivia mixed I'm little tennis with a little bit of he actually hasn't won any. Um so if you lose today, then that's not not great. Says a lot. Um, okay. Yeah. So we're gonna go a little trivia, a little bit of tennis stuff, and yeah, it's gonna be five questions. The first person to answer, you just shout out the answer. If you shout out the answer and you're wrong, you have to wait till he gives his try, and then you can go again for the same okay. question. Yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, there's three out of five. First to three wins, and that'll be the end. You ready? Let's go. Jody, you good? Bro, look at me. I'm ready. Born ready. All right. Since we're heading over to the grass in Europe, and you're going to be in London for Wimbledon, how many countries make up the United Kingdom? Oh, fuck. <laughs> Hell no. That's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> no Let me send out a number. I just have to send out you the got, number. Any hints? You got family from there, bro. You spent time hints? over there, bro. Do we have any hints? Reese, I'm sorry. It's an bro. even number. Reese, I'm sorry. It's an even. It's an even number. The United Kingdom is united, right? They're united, and they are a union. They are one. I would say two of them into one. That's crazy. No, that's bad. Is that a horrible guess? That was yeah, a terrible yeah, yeah. guess. Wait, you didn't even guess. You said hell. Can no. I say eight? All right, you got it's it's in the middle it's in the middle of those two answers somewhere. This this is next question. Let's just run it. Yeah, no, next no, no, question. No, no, no. Run the next one. Four, four, the answer's, four. That answer is four. I'm gonna give Taylor one. That's crazy. That was t- who came up with these questions? Yeah, stupid Me. question. Stupid question. All right, <laughs> this might be worse because this is like elementary school stuff. How many sides does a heptagon have? Seven. Wow, my dog. Let's go. One, one. Okay. Seven. Seven, you didn't know that? I was like, hex. Oh, oh, seven. This, hey, this how, is easy for me. This is easy for me. How, slow. how many WTA doubles titles does Taylor have? Five. Five. Oh, shit. You don't yeah. even know. She, she was late. You were Jody late. got two. Two, one. Two. Taylor, you're about to lose? This is exciting. Let's go. All right. <laughs> Who was the finalist of this year's Women's French Open in singles? Paulini. Wow, we got 2-2 two, two, down to the wire. Also, Baller, by the and way, I'm... did you see her? Did you see her at what tournament was it that she was cramping? Netta Cup. Who? Like the... Cup, that girl, the pa- Paulini. In January oh, yeah. in Australia. She was, like, she was like up a set and maybe down a break, but cramping and just started hitting the shit out of every ball and it went in came back and won <laughs> it was the most call me daddy shit i've ever seen sorry go on just call me question. daddy shit i've ever seen we got that t-shirt y'all we're gonna go we're gonna go with a spelling question and i'm gonna let taylor answer first because she's the lady now you do you me. know who do you know who yuri lehechka is yeah i need you to spell his last name for me L. L E Yes. L E D. Start over, start over, start over, start over. I didn't hear you. Say what do you mean start over? 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 L E D. Oh, that's wrong. There's no D. Let me say it again. Let me say it again. Let me say his name again. Let me say his name again. It is a D. It's silent. Le Hechka. Le Hechka. But the D is check. Okay. So you're going with L E D? LED what? LED lights? <laughs> what else? What else? LED. <laughs> KCA. <laughs> All right, Jody, 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 Jody. Bro, I want to say something even crazier, bro. It's going to be L E C. Yes. Oh, my. That's not his name. It's not a silent C. <laughs> All right, new, new, new tiebreaker. First one, the answer gets it right. Oh By the God. way, it's spelled L E H E C K A. I'll show you that. This wrong with the fucking D. The what did I say? There's D? there's no D. There's no D anywhere in that. All right, all right. Look, let's go. Next one. Next one. We gotta wrap this. The shit last up question. Anyway. It's embarrassing us. First one to answer. Just blurt it out. What is nine minus three? Six. Six. It's been great playing with you, Taylor. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Sorry, loser. We call, whoa, whoa, we call it a tie. We call we give it a tie. I heard no chance. Okay. 
Okay, okay, okay. We go again. Nah, we go nah, again. It's all good. It's all good. Let's just roll. Let's just roll. Let's just roll. Let's Seven roll. times six. What? No, nah, we're good. Listen. Seven times two? six. Point yeah, two. Taylor wins. Taylor wins. Taylor wins. Good. Before we roll, Justin, you want to say something yeah. about this? You want to say Yo, about this no? link in the bio. Like link in the bio. We have uh, merchandise. You can buy some hoodies, some t-shirts, some pullovers. We also have Pro Stringer. You buy a stringer, use the code changeover, get hundred dollars off the machine. Um, what else do we have going on? That's uh, recruited, know, trying, to, trying to go to college, go to recruited on the website, use the, the code changeover as well. Uh, you get 10% off anything on that site. And that is it. We want to say a big thank you to Taylor for coming on and doing this last minute before you travel to to Europe. And before you go make some, some girls, your, your sons again and your daughters. <laughs> and yes thank you very much and wish you all the best and hopefully one day we do this in person this is very fun I enjoyed this a lot yeah me too thank you Taylor thank you the only thing I can say is that I don't want him wearing no pink stuff no more because you look like a nipple oh that's crazy uh oh that's crazy talk. Uh -oh. yay I guess all so right. we can edit that out too all right. Reese that's gone that's gone out of here it's all good <laughs> Yo. I love you guys. This is so no, fun. Thank you so much for coming. Once again, we'll, that was great. We, we'll run it again in person for sure. Yeah, absolutely. In person for sure. After. Right. Hey, safe thanks travels action, and much love. Thank you. All right, thanks, thanks you guys. Hit me. See you next week. Yeah, and hit me when, um, send me the link, like, and everything. Tag me in the stuff when it when it drops, and, like, I'll make sure to post it and everything. Sounds yeah, good. Yeah, thank and we'll you. send you all the clips and stuff, and if you want to collaborate, help, help us out. Great. If not, put on a story. Also great. And, yeah. All right, Love. cool. I got right, appreciate it. Thank you. Bye, you Peace. guys. Good night. Night.